there, my name is Erin McDermott. I am a Director of Engineering at SpireStarter.com and I'm reaching out to my network today to see if any of you could help one of uh, the many students that have been uh, emailing me lately about um, advice on different programs and courses of study and things that they should make sure that they do before entering the workforce to make them employable which is awesome, but a lot of these questions I can't um, specifically answer because my background doesn't precisely line up with what they're trying to do. So if you guys could help me out and give any feedback that you have, um, that would be great. Uh, instead of just replying to all the individual emails that I get, um, this last one I decided, let me just make a video and um, that way it can help hopefully more than one person. Uh, in addition to this video and putting it on LinkedIn, I'm going to have this of course on my website. And then also there is a forum that colleagues of mine have put up for optical engineers specifically to ask questions of each other and get advice and uh, network. So I thought that would be a great place to also put this question. You can reply in any of these places and I will send the feedback back to the student in question. I started getting a lot of these questions after I posted some content through Solid Smack on a very very basic simplified overview of what is optical engineering and it kind of just touched on some of the tools that we use as optical engineers too. Um, I was mostly trying to produce that for other engineering disciplines that don't know what optical engineering is, but I was surprised to get a lot of feedback from students from that. So that's where this came from, I believe. Um, I'm actually not sure if this student is a male or female, so my apologies right off the bat. Um, I'm going to assume female. I'm just, we're gonna call you female for today. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the name the student preferred to use was Young Moondi. Um, and on LinkedIn, they are Hexa Koo. So you can also connect with the student on LinkedIn. I will link them in the post there. Um, I'll just read for you guys the email that I got in response to that article. Um, I am a person who wants to become an optical engineer when I grow up. That's so sweet. You're one of us. Um, I read your article on what is optical engineering and was truly inspired and got to know insight of what they actually do. It's excellent, by the way, that you're buttering me up in this email already right off the bat. That's kudos to you. Good technique. I'm having a hard time deciding where to go to university, for university, because I can't make up my mind if I have to study BS in optical science or in mechanical electrical engineering, or if there's another course that I have to study. I want to study in Europe where tuition fees are much cheaper compared to US. I think I also looked into that myself when I was trying to decide where to go to college. Looking at optical science, a lot of the curriculum was based on medical and improving eyesight when I am more interested in imaging optics, such as cameras, including those in machine vision systems, microscopes, telescopes, and binoculars, as you've mentioned in your article. So far, I have been comparing curriculums to see if they teach people optical software providers you have mentioned. So I'm guessing the, the op optical simulation software, the ZMAX and light tools, and TracePro Code 5, So, my question is, okay, great, what is your question? Which route is better to study, optical science or mechanical, electrical, engineering, or physics? I just also really want to say thank you for writing the article because I got to know the terms people use, but also detailed insight. Thank you for reading this, and if you have time, I would love to know your thought. And I'm sure she or he would like to also know your thoughts as well. So here I'm gonna provide my reply to Young Mundi, but any any hints that you guys have would be great for the student. So let me just say first off that it is excellent, Young Mundi, that you are um, kind of narrowing down already 
the types of optics that you're interested in and how you might want to use them. Now I'm still not clear if you are interested in building the cameras, the telescopes, the microscopes, or if you want to use them in another application. Because that is very critical for answering your question. Now if you want to actually be the person who designs the lenses and apertures and everything in like the camera that I'm using right now to shoot this, then I would say for sure you should go get an optical science degree. Whatever the top optical science degree programs are for Europe. And it might not even be top in any way that makes sense in actual reality, but really what is top in terms of the eyes of the people who build these things, right? So, like if you want to go work for Panasonic or Sony, then you might want to try to reach out to optical engineers there, or even just creep on their LinkedIn profiles and see where they went to college, right? Or both. <laughs> Do both. And figure out um, that way which uh, colleges in, sorry, universities in Europe would have the most clout, because that actually probably will go a long ways there. If that is not what you're trying to do, if you're just trying to get into learning about how to use these tools in other applications that you're building, then really probably anything you want to study would be good. Um, you mentioned optical science or mechanical engineering or electrical engineering. Um, I personally studied applied physics um, because I was interested in kind of the whole system. I wanted to be able to look down on an entire invention. If that was a machine vision application, I wanted to understand every part of it, not just the lighting and the, um, and the actual uh, mechanical components, uh, but also you know, the, the algorithm development and like the whole part of the machine vision from where the first photon is fired off to where it's analyzed um, as software. Super interesting to me and that's how I wanted to be able to function um, when I'm providing value to a company that's building that in the future. So applied physics Sometimes it's called engineering physics, sometimes those are slightly different programs, but basically it gives you a, a little taste of each type of engineering. And from there you have a much better idea of what your fellow disciplines are doing and how it all fits together. And, and sometimes that understanding is very lacking in um, hardware development because you hear this term of uh, your work being siloed, so you only see exactly what you're trying to do and you forget that um, there are other disciplines or other departments in your company that have competing interests. So maybe you want to set the LED to, uh, I don't know, 10 milliamps, but it makes more sense for thermal for it to be set to 7, right? And uh, electrical engineering wants something else. So it's very helpful at many times to have a better understanding of what all the parts are doing. And it is even possible, depending on the curriculum, because they are so different, that maybe you could get a better uh, program for what you want to do with a mechanical engineering degree, uh, depending on what that specific university is offering and how many electives you have and, and where you can pull in other classes from. So maybe, uh, or maybe an electrical engineering degree would be best for you if they also have a very strong um, optics program and a very strong computer science program where you can take electives in. So that would be something pretty important on the elective side to, to consider. So I would look first of all, how many electives would you have in each program that you're considering? And then look at those um, kind of complementary disciplines to see what offerings you might be able to take from there. When I studied, I had the um, applied physics curriculum, but then we also had to pick a concentration. And so I picked optics. 
and that's how I got into optical engineering. Um, but in addition to that, we also had electives. And when I studied abroad at the Fachhochschule Ulm in Ulm, Germany, uh, I actually didn't take any optics or physics classes. I took a computer science class as an elective because they had a machine vision class, which back then, that was 14 years ago. <laughs> so that was actually pretty hard to find. It was um, great to be able to go to this other country, this other university, and take this machine vision course because that isn't something you normally find in, in the U.S. at that time. I would imagine it's a lot easier at this point to find these classes because it is becoming such an important technology uh, in so many things. But I think that that class was very important for like my general understanding as an engineer and what I ended up doing. Um, sometimes people say the things that they study aren't really applicable to what they do, but that one sure was. That one was really helpful. Um, so yeah, look at the computer science electives that you might be able to pull in. Uh, look into mechanical stuff. Optomechanical engineering is its own thing. So. Uh, it would be good for you to get used to solid modeling from the mechanical engineering side. Um, this can help you build things like mounts, um, and sometimes you have to like build physical structures, especially if you get into lighting design in CAD, which is can be separate from uh, the optical simulation part. So it's good to have like a basic understanding of mechanical engineering and CAD. And if you can take some just basic electrical engineering classes, even if it's just the 101, I would say that should be a minimum requirement if you're interested in getting into all these things, um, try to take more. But again, if there's anything on the electrical engineering side that might uh, look like it's um, lending itself to machine vision applications, if that's what you're interested in, you know, that should be taken into account too when you're picking the university. Um, you've mentioned that in a subsequent email, you mentioned that you're going to be visiting the open days because some universities don't specify the curriculum or equipment usage unless we show up in person. Um, so you should be doing that right now. That is great. That would be another one of my recommendations is to visit the universities in person and try to talk with some of the professors who would be your teachers because personal connections are super important. <laughs> and um, you reached out to me and so now I'm doing this and hopefully getting you more attention and more answers from my network, right? Um, the same thing happens when you visit professors and they see someone who is very interested in their education and they're going to go the extra mile to actually show up in person and ask questions. When they see that, then like people want to help other people in general, but when they know that you're actually motivated enough to follow through with the things that they help you with, then that motivates them even more to help you. Does that make sense? So, yeah, showing up in person is one of those things to show that you're super motivated and that you are going to go to the distance and you're going to be successful and you're going to finish the program and you're going to be a star student in the future, right? So that's great that you're doing that. Um, if after your whirlwind tour um, you're not getting enough of that in, you haven't had enough questions answered, you haven't found a good program, I would try looking at the universities you didn't get a chance to visit and try to find specific professors to contact and see if they could answer your questions that way. So another super, super key part of being employable in the future is practical experience. Um, the university that I went to Kettering University, it used to be General Motors Institute, uh, they had a, and still do, a co-op program, and it it's mandatory part of the curriculum, and there's a thesis component, it's like a five-year, they say four and a half, but it's five years of 
um, straight up working and school, no spring break, no summer vacation, it's hardcore. And that was a bachelor of science degree. But I came out of that with, you know, having worked at a corporation for two and a half years. And so when I entered the workforce, it was, what was it, it was 2007. And we were like right about to hit, we were in the middle of like a quasi recession and about to hit a very, you know, several industry spanning wide <laughs> recession. Jumping into the workforce with corporate experience already behind me um, made me not a student, but you know, I was looked upon as someone who was part of that world already. So the things that you're being judged on are different, and I think it's easier if you can show like what you've accomplished as an employee versus an employer looking at your resume and seeing the things you did as a student and trying to assume what value you could bring as an employee. They're different things, right? So it's a lot easier for them to make the mental jump between one company and another versus, okay, you were a student there, but what could you do as an employee? And hopefully, too, uh, that will give you the opportunity to have some really stellar things on your resume that are along the lines of something that you would do at a corporation. Things that you've developed, things that you can see maybe um, out in a store or on the road or that you can show that had value to the marketplace. So there's different ways that you can get uh, practical experience. If you don't have a formalized co-op program like my university was where you know we had to partner with uh, a corporation and that was part of our schooling and we were at the same corporation for many years. Um, sometimes you can do an internship. It looks like from your LinkedIn profile that you have done an internship previously in uh, digital... Uh, no, sorry. In graphic design. So that's cool. You're no um, stranger to internships. So I'd say at the very least get an internship no matter where you go, but if you can find a university that incorporates a co-op program, this is a much more rigorous and much more long-term relationship that you can build with a company before you leave. And oftentimes you'll get a job offer before you leave. Um, I did. So when I was both leaving um, the co-op and graduating from my university, I did have a full-time offer. So that's not uncommon. Now I know in Germany they've switched up their old uh, academic format of the, I think it was like four to five years, you get a diploma. Um, it was kind of a professional certification, especially for engineering. And then to my knowledge, right about the time that I was studying in Germany, they were doing away with that and moving to like a three-year bachelor's degree. And I remember the students were saying like, oh, well, our three-year bachelor's degree, that's actually what you have. Because we, we had to tone down our degree to make it the same as your United States bachelor degree. And I was like, mm, bullshit. <laughs> because uh, what we were doing in the US was the same as what they were doing for their diploma. Um, but that's, again, university to university can be very, very different. And especially if you're looking in Europe at different uh, countries, then again, there are differences there too. But anything that was more resembling that old uh, diploma uh, curriculum style, if I were you, I would try to gravitate more towards that. Otherwise, a three-year Bachelor of Science degree especially if you can't fit in any uh, practical experience, might be not enough. Okay, so you also had a question about finding universities that would be able to teach you the different software programs that I mentioned, and that that is a very good point to consider when you're looking for a university. Um, I know for myself, that not having enough optical software programs in 
my experience at certain points in my career that definitely kept me from being able to find a new job quickly. My first, so my, my co-op job, that was laser process development and for that we didn't need uh, optical simulation software. That was mostly just like calculus, pen and paper, and uh, lab experiments and Excel spreadsheets. So I didn't even need it for my first job. And then I basically stayed with ASAP for for the majority of my experience. I was working in ASAP for the next two corporate jobs that I had. Um, so I didn't really have an opportunity to learn many different programs and it really wasn't a part of our curriculum in college. So that is great that you're asking those questions and you're trying to find that information at the very least. Um, but also know that there are possibilities to try to learn it on your own. And a lot of these companies will offer like a 30 day free trial. Um, they might have student discounts too. Um, but yeah, if you can get practical experience with them, the more you can get the better. I wouldn't even say which ones to get. I'd just say, just try to get as many as you can. That's a great idea. Uh, if you want to get into uh, imaging system design, I would definitely try to get ZMAX. That's very common in industry to see that program. And as you go from company to company, keep in mind that, okay, maybe you do have ZMAX, but that company uses code 5 for their design, so that's not going to help you because they oftentimes are not going to buy an optical software program just because you prefer it, you have experience with it. You're going to have to go into a new um, corporate environment and mold yourself to what they have. So again, the more programs you can get under your belt, the better. It will make you more appealing to more companies when you're trying to look for a job. Um, if anybody has any more specific information about um, universities in Europe and financing and uh, the best ways to go about getting maybe practical experience when you're doing that type of thing. Um, please let Yumundi know. Um, now one more thing I would say, Yumundi, please consider uh, getting internships or study abroad so that you can get to even more countries while you can. I mean, that was also super helpful. I mentioned that I studied in um, Germany and guess what? My first job right out of college after I graduated was with a company that was based like an hour and a half drive from where I studied in Germany. and. That was no small part of the reason why I got the, that job. So other optical engineers, scientists, uh, other wise optics professionals out there, if you have um, any sort of feedback for maybe not just Young Moody, but other students who are considering getting into optics as a profession in one way or another, or photonics, please drop your comments wherever you're seeing this. And do check out the forum. It is at uh, community.eleoptics.com. You can find me on there as Spire Starter. That's my company name. And uh, you can also send more questions to the contact form at spirestarter.com. There's also uh, a podcast on the ELE Optics community. Uh, lots of good stuff on there. So I would definitely check that out too. How are you guys? Um, and if you have other questions, you can also put it on the forum. Whether you're a student or a professional, it's so far it's been a pretty friendly place where you can ask questions. Especially you could like send them to me if you if you think that they're too stupid. Uh, there's no stupid questions. Actually, there are, but you know you're probably not going to be asking them.
or if you have some other questions, uh, whether you're a professional or a student, and um, you think maybe you'd like a longer explanation with more content, uh, we can look at doing that too, so let me know. Maybe a forum isn't enough, but that's a good place to start. <laughs> Thank you for watching and thank you for any information that you can send to our student here, Young Mundi, and any other students who might be watching. Bye.